Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to some of you and peace to the rest of you. This is Black Heart Sign of Black and again asking you to hit that like. Uh, I mean asking you to hit that share button actually before you hit the like or the subscribe button. The reason being that the message is more important than the messenger. And uh, this message is going to be about uh, a misconception that we oftentimes have. And you can see it in the title. This ain't new. The issues are older than the manosphere. The issues have been around not only for decades, not even only for generations. They've been around not even only for centuries, but actually for millennia. In ancient Rome, Alex Jones uh, uh, rightly pointed this out, and I studied history, and I learned this from him, but in ancient Rome, uh, the Romans enslaved anybody, white or black. And they used the women to control the slave communities. Eventually, the women did not need to know that they were protecting the men in order to control the slave communities. The women who were enslaved themselves enjoyed the power of controlling the slave communities so that the men would not rebel. That was it. He pointed this out. Now, we're talking millennia. Next, what happened? Move forward. In Africa, first the men were being kidnapped, not women. As the men were being kidnapped and taken across the ocean to the Americas, and the women were not, what was happening to the women back on the continent? I'm not really sure. But some people have said that the women were actually accepting to be concubines of these men that had conquered, at least the coastlines. Some have not said that. I'm not really sure. What I do know is that later on, men and women began to be taken, usually from the interior, to the coast and then transported across so that they could then be bred in the Americas, which would save uh, in terms of shipping. It would be less expensive to ship and uh, to ship, feed, and then break and tame and domesticate slaves. It would make slavery more profitable. That's not all. That's not the only thing. That's not where it ended. The women in the community, of course, as we know, they were given a, a special privilege and status as a buffer class to keep the men from rebelling and fighting back. We all know this. We've read the history books. We've seen it. We've talked about it. This is common knowledge in the black community, let alone in the black manosphere. When white men began to get sick and tired of the feminism of the white bitch in the Western world, Becky uh, and Amber and Wendy, uh, what did they do? They started going to Thailand. And of course, you know, there were those who also went for the little underage girls and even the little underage boys. That does exist. That's where some of these niggas like Stupid Sly and Toadcast came up with these ideas of accusing black men of going for this crazy stuff. That's not something we've largely been into, and we also know we're not going to get away with it for as long as a white boy would. Hell, they're not getting away with it in Cambodia. So anyway, make a long story short, uh, the white women had a reaction to it, started gaslighting these men, and then black women picked up on and started gaslighting brothers that go to the DR or Brazil. Where well, you going because they're exotic and mixed. The DR and Brazil are black countries. They come in the same wide range of complexions and hair textures as African-Americans. So it's like traveling to get someone that is visually the same as an African-American, but by the same token, you don't have to deal with the attitudes. And even now, they're saying that the DR is getting ruined in terms of the attitudes. So if that's the case, I'm just like, okay, then, um, you know, why go? Now, Stupid Sly did say one thing that is correct, and that is that these other places are going to change too. That, that, I do believe that's going to happen. There'll be somewhere else where it's not a problem. Brothers will go there. Eventually, those places will run out. What will happen? Brothers are going to say, well, okay, either we can remove the testicles, and I, I, think it, I don't think this generation would accept it, but there'll be future generations of brothers who will say, we'll just remove the testicles. That way we have no libido at all, we got nothing to worry about. I do think this will happen because if you look at what we were like 20 years ago, and you look at what we're like today, you would never believe in some of the changes just that have happened to black folks. But a lot of men simply would not be willing to go through that kind of hormonal change. <laughs> They're more likely to say, well, you know, for less money, let's just go ahead and uh, get these dolls or pay to play and trick. You're not really paying them to, spit, to bend over. They'll do that for free. You're paying them to not come and bother you. That's really what it is. 
A lot of other men are going to say, well, they'll let this other guy over here hit it and quit it casually. I'm not going to sit up here and pay them to go away either. I'm going to tap that on the strength of nothing. Or I'm just going to get a doll and leave the women alone altogether. The point I'm making is that when the world runs out of women that don't bring the headache simply because they have a vagina, then the men are going to lead the women. And I don't think a lot of the men are going to turn around and go with other men either. It's not going to happen. The issues are older than the manosphere. The manosphere is a reaction. Men's rights advocates, manosphere, red pill, are not the fault of men. They're the fault of feminists. End of story. Secondly, how do you know this? Well, look at the movie Thelma and Louise. I'm not sure exactly what the plot, I, I didn't see the movie. So I really don't know if the characters went ham because of something that legitimately provoked them or not. What I do know is that there's nothing a man can go through from women that would be seen as legitimately provoking a man to do the same thing these women did. I do know that. I know that women have been going long before men, white and black women alike, especially white women have been going long before men, getting passports, going into other countries and paying uh, well-muscled men, oftentimes fishermen near beach locations to dig them out. I know that they've been doing this and this was laughed at, but it was accepted. Labadi Beach in Ghana was famous for this back in the 90s. Well, now that you got some brothers going and they're saying, well, I'm taking care of the women. I just want a woman that's going to appreciate it. Now that you got brothers going either to trick or to find a girlfriend or to even look for a wife, whatever the case is. Now that you got brothers doing this, it's a damn problem. In both societies, when women did this, the men didn't trip. But when the men did this, the women had something to say about it. The issue is older than the manosphere and it's not men's fault. Men have not controlled the sexual market single-handedly. Men have influenced the sexual market mostly unintentionally because we don't understand women. Women have had control over the sexual market for the good and the bad that it's worth. They don't want to take responsibility for it. What's happening now is nothing other than Western bitches. Otherwise, I would have called them women. But no, these are Western bitches never, who never grew up. They got upset because men Western men learned that they had better options than merely having to tolerate childishness in adult women in order to fuck. That's what happened. Men said, wait, I don't have to deal with this. I don't have to deal with your 31-year-old ass acting like you're 13 because you got a pussy and some titties and ass, and I want to dig you out. Because there are other countries, there are other cultures in the world where these women realize something that is actually very important for men and women to realize, but the women have realized it outside the West, in many cases, not always. And that is that Satisfying your libido is more realistic and more important than trying to satisfy your materialism. For either gender, it's like that. Men have just simply had to come to understand this. Western women have been shielded from this. Despite being slapped in the face with this reality multiple times, they refuse to accept it. You're not going, most of you are not going to have your materialism and your libido satisfied. Most of you can find satisfaction for your libido, but you can't find it for materialism as well because by nature, the things that are valuable are also rare, so everybody ain't gonna get it. That's what you're dealing with, and they don't like it. So they're mad at men because we don't, have, we don't all have enough diamonds and gold to impress them. Well, if we all had enough diamonds and gold to impress them, then they would no longer be impressed by diamonds and gold. And so women of other places with far worse economies have had to understand that if they get too materialistic, unrealistically materialistic, they will have neither the materials nor the ding -ling to help them sleep at night. That's it. That's all, this, all there is to it. They don't have anything better waiting on them than that. Either the ding -ling that's available for the price that man can afford or nothing. Western women, we were stupid enough to let them think that they could escape this harsh reality. That's on us as men and on women. I hope that this has been a benefit. Salam alaikum.